All right, it looks like I'm live here on my fan page, so, or wherever you're watching this video. Um, I don't know how I will repurpose it, but I do want to take a minute to share about the signs that we're seeing of end times. And um, I think most of us already know that that's what's happening, but I actually wanna point a few things out that as I've been studying this, um, I'm actually in New Mexico. I left uh, California and I'm here in New Mexico in a little tiny town up in the mountains near my family. One of the sweetest things about that is I've been able to do um, some Bible studies with my parents. And right now we're looking at Daniel 9. Book of Daniel 9 uh, goes into quite a, quite a bit about the seven-year tribulation that will come to pass, that has to come to pass. And uh, we know that everything we're seeing right now, pretty much every Christian across the globe is um, knows that things are moving very rapidly toward toward the end. And what I what I, I just want to clarify what I mean by that, the end times, biblically speaking, we've been in for quite some time. But when I say the very end of times, I'm referring to the seven year tribulation that does have to come to pass. We know that inside that seven year tribulation, there is the um, rise of the Antichrist who will have a solution for the globe. We know that we need to, we will be in more of a, um, a, a one world order global government. Um, we know a lot of those things have to come to pass. We're literally watching those structures start to get put into place very rapidly right now. Um, we're seeing very rapid changes here in America. And of course, there's a lot of pushback for that, but there's a lot of things that at this point, the ball is rolling in such a direction. I don't know that we're going to be able to turn it around. Uh, and the only reason for that is because if it's written and it's time for what's written to come to pass, it's going to come to pass no matter what, right? But being that there's a lot of people talking about the end times, uh, I just want to share a couple of things that are really interesting. And you probably have your own knowledge about it. Maybe you've done studies on this. I'd love to hear from you down below on it and what you're seeing and what God's revealing to you in your spirit. I know there's a lot of people starting to put out videos and live videos of what God's personally revealing to them. Um, I'm actually not gonna really give you that today. I'm really just gonna tell you what the word says. And God keeps confirming a lot of that for me because I'm witnessing so much happen right now. And a part of me wants to like wake people up and um, I won't go into detail of what we're seeing here in America right now, but it's, it's mind blowing what's happening right now, mind blowing. And, um, and then when you look at end times, it's like, oh my gosh, here's what still has to come to pass. Now, what's interesting is the Bible's very clear. Jesus says, um, the Bible tells us that, that Jesus can come at any moment to get us, right? So the church, we all know if you read the Bible and you believe the Bible is the word of God, we know that there's a rapture. And it's a really weird concept, but the rapture is when the believers are taken off the earth. And there's uh, different theologians, there's different uh, theologies in terms of when that happens, right? So some people believe pre-tribulation as in it happens before the seven-year tribulation, some people believe it's mid-tribulation, which means it happens about three and a half years into the seven-year tribulation, which is um, kind of indicating that the rapture would happen once the Antichrist is fully revealed, because the, last, the second three and a half years of the tribulation are the darkest and hardest. Um, and again, Daniel 9, if you want to go read on that. But what's interesting is whether you believe pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, either way, there's a rapture. Either way, the believers, the, the church is, is uh, taken up, um, and it can happen in a flash. It can happen in a moment. That's why the Bible says, be ready. Jesus will come like a thief in the night. Be ready. Um, be ready at any moment. Every day, the Bible says to, to live and be ready for that. So, you know, the Bible indicates that Jesus could come at any moment for us and that a whole bunch of things don't really need to come to pass before that happens. And that's one of the reasons that that's one of the things that supports the pre-tribulation rapture, which is that um, there's many things that support it. I'm not going to go into all that detail. For example, the church isn't mentioned at all through most of the books of, um, of Revelation. Uh, they talk about the elect, they talk about the saints, but um, that's more in reference to those who come to believe during the tribulation. But there's many that believe we will already be raptured before those seven years start. 
but that being said, the Bible does say to be ready because Jesus could come back for us at any moment. Now, Jesus can't come back as far as um, the second coming until all these things come to pass. So there, there is there is a distinction in that. And I know if you're post-tribulation rapture, you believe the rapture and the second coming of Jesus kind of happens all as one event. But being that the Bible says, be ready, Jesus can come back for you at any moment. Um, he's coming back for the church for the rap, you know, with the rapture at any moment. And then we also know that for the second coming of Jesus, when he actually comes back um, to earth, when every knee will bow, when everybody will witness him and everyone will see him, there are certain biblical things that have to come to pass before that happens, right? So we know, again, it's the rise of the Antichrist. We know there will be the mark of the beast. There will be those who refuse to take the mark of the beast, even if it means that they starve and they can't buy and they can't sell um, because they don't bow down to the beast. Uh, we know uh, it's interesting too. There's certain things, biblically speaking, I mean, so many prophecies have already been fulfilled. I mean, even Jesus coming fulfilled over 400 prophecies, uh, himself of the old testament in the, in the end times is written about through the old testament all the way through the new testament and everything is very congruent all the way up to the book of revelation so revelation by itself is not the only book that talks about end times you know and then of course we have it in the gospels matthew 24 luke i think 12 or 13 um talk about it as well and then uh there's a lot of different books of the Bible that reconfirm everything else. So it's just very coordinated, very correlated. There's a lot there for us, but it can also be hard to understand sometimes. Um, and as right now, as we're going through this Bible study, it's just been fascinating. I, I, there's never been a more interesting time to study end time prophecy than right now. Um, and regardless of where you stand on pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, like we're not going to get into that whole debate. I personally, um, don't stand solid in one or the other. I just know we will be raptured and I know that Jesus is coming back. And that's really what I care about and what, how exactly God does that. I trust him in that. Um, and I'm open to any one of those three ways. And there are things that support each one of the theories, but either way, the one, the, what is not up for debate is that we are in fact raptured and taken up. And number two, Jesus is coming back and every knee will bow and the entire planet is gonna see him and it's gonna be something crazy. There's also no, no, uh, it, you know, in the Christian faith and Bible believing Christians, there's also no debate on there being a, a, a tribulation and the great tribulation is nothing like tribulations that we go through. We all have tribulations in our life and we know that we have brothers and sisters in Christ around the world that are being killed right now for their faith. They're being um, slaughtered, their heads are chopped off, they're, they're martyrs for the Christian faith. And that's nothing compared to the great tribulation, right? Those are martyrs for the Christian faith that is happening. And it has been happening for thousands of years. Um, but the great tribulation is a whole nother thing, right? That is ultimately uh, when God's wrath is poured out on the earth and the believers are not meant to experience that wrath. That's why there is a rapture. But again, people that believe post-tribulation believe that God keeps us here, but protects us from his wrath. Um, and people that believe mid-trib and pre-trib believe God just takes us away so we don't have to experience any of it. Uh, I don't know. We will find out. But I do know that it's coming faster than we probably thought possible because there's certain things that do have to come to pass before the end of those seven years and when Jesus ultimately comes back for the whole earth, right? We know that Israel was scattered. Israel did not exist about 75 years ago. It was, as a nation, it was scattered. It was not a nation anymore. 70 years ago, well, I'm sorry, I'll say 80 years ago, because um, I think they're, they're they, they might be a 73 or 74 year old nation now, 72, something like that. Anyway, the year that Trump uh, moved the uh, embassy to Jerusalem, acknowledging Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, that was their 70th birthday as a nation. So even though Israel got scattered just like the Bible said, they would scatter and they would come back as a nation. These are things that had to come to pass before the end, right? So they came back as a nation 70 years ago. That wasn't that long ago. They came back as a nation 70 years ago. Um, obviously, it was a big deal on the 70th birthday. You know, the number seven is very important in the Bible. But on the 70th birthday uh, as a nation, um, Israel... Uh, you know, America moved the embassy to Jerusalem, which was a really big deal. And the number seven is a big deal. That was, that was their 70th birthday. 
So that was interesting. And then um, Jews from all over the globe have been migrating to live in Israel. And it's happening in the masses. I mean, the movement there is amazing. And the Bible says that will happen because all of God's people, all the Jewish people are being called back to their homeland. And it's happening right now. It's very fascinating. Look it up. Actually, CBN Christian Broadcast Network just did um, an article about, I think, all the Ukrainian Jews that are moving over to Israel right now. Anyway, this that's happening. It said it had to happen and it's happening. Um, and we also know that for the Antichrist to rise up and be this global leader and have this global solution um, and make it, he's going to make Israel a, a promise, a treaty, whatever it is, and then he breaks it, uh, he breaks it and turns on them completely. Um, all of that, for all that part to happen, we know that we have a one world order, we have a one world government. We know that. Right now, we're seeing the movement in that direction. We're seeing global organizations like the World Health Organization having a lot of power, right? We're seeing um, unelected global leaders like uh, Bill Gates rise up and say, uh, let's vaccinate all seven point whatever billion people on the planet. Um, we're seeing global society. We're, we're hearing and they're moving in the direction of um, global currency global identification. It's happening and it has to happen for what's written about to come to pass in, in that seven year tribulation. We're seeing lawlessness. We just are. And I'm not going to get into the debate about the police and all of that. People are so fired up about it. If I share where I stand on law and order, I get so much hatred thrown at me. It's unbelievable right now. There's so much hatred everywhere. People are justifying violent action like it's the way to go. You know, people are justifying lawlessness. People are so deeply deceived right now. But guess what? That's all written about. Lawlessness will take over the land in the Great Tribulation. We're moving in that direction already. We're seeing the crumbling of, um, of order, of law and order. We're seeing chaos. We're seeing anarchy. We're seeing the beginnings of all of it. And this is just the beginnings. It's like the birth pains of what's coming. It is nothing like what the, tr the tribulation will be. And if you're listening to this right now and you are a believer in Jesus Christ, meaning you acknowledge that he's the son of God, that he died on the cross for your sins, rose again three days later and is the living God. If you are a believer, by grace, you have been saved. You didn't earn it. You didn't deserve it. He died on the cross for all of us. But if you are a believer, the beautiful part about that is you get to be raptured one way or the other, whether it's pre, mid, post-trib, I don't know. I won't pretend to be the expert on that because theologians themselves don't agree on that one. You will be taken up and you will, um, you do not have God's wrath coming for you. And you know why? Because Jesus already took his wrath on the cross and you received Jesus. That's it. It's really not that complicated, but the beautiful part is you do not have God's wrath coming for you. No, it doesn't mean you don't have trials and tribulations in your life. It doesn't mean that God doesn't allow for what we see on this planet. We have see sin, we see darkness, we see um, the enemy messing with people. It happens as part of our life here. We go through our own tribulations. We're not protected from that because we're actually, um, that's part of our life here. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world, right? That's part of our life here. But God does not have any wrath. His wrath is not on us. His wrath isn't coming for us because we have Jesus as our covering, right? So if you're listening to this, just be encouraged with that right now. Be reminded of that. You have, you have the blood of Jesus on you. You're, you're good. You're covered no matter what's coming. No matter how crazy this world gets, no matter how deceived people get. And whether we see the tribulation or we're here to see it, or whether we're raptured before that, God's got a plan for us. We're good. And if you're listening to this right now and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you hear about him dying on the cross, but you haven't acknowledged that you believe that he died for your sins and that he rose again three days later. Maybe you're in that, eh, I don't really need a savior. That was me seven, eight years ago. Maybe you're in the phase of, nah, always lead to heaven. 
I just want to remind you right now that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the penalty of sin is death. That's what we all deserve. No one's not in that boat. That's the human condition. But God loved us so much, he made a way. He sent his only son to die for us to pay the price of our sin debt. The price had to be paid. The question is, do you want to receive the one who paid it? Or do you want to receive the penalty yourself? And God gives us that choice. But either way, we've all sinned. There is no person who hasn't sinned. That's crystal clear. You know, Jesus went into detail about what sin is. He said, if you have hated someone, it's the same as murder. So you could look at someone in prison and say, ah, they murdered someone. I've never murdered anyone. He says, if you look at someone who's not your spouse with lust, you've committed adultery. I'm pretty sure we've all done that. And we've probably all had hatred towards someone. And so the truth is we've all sinned. There's no escaping it. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. The penalty of sin is death. And that's where we're headed. It's eternal death. It's separation from God. And, you know, God's not going to force us to be with him. He's not going to force us to spend eternity with Jesus Christ if we're rejecting him. You know, Jesus came and he paid the price of our, of our sins on the cross. And we get to receive him or say, no, nah, I'm good. We either get to have the blood of Jesus and say, our, our debt is paid. Our penalty is paid. I have access to eternal life. I am protected from the seven-year tribulation. I, I'm good. Not because I deserved it. Not because I'm any better than anyone else. Just because I believe the one who made the way for me. And that's the biggest difference between this concept of there's so many ways to heaven. There is no one else that paid the price. There's no one else that lived a sinless life, went to the cross, took the full wrath of God and paid the price of your sins and then rose again three days later and conquered death. There is no one else who did that. Everyone else who came and had great teachings, they all died, couldn't save themselves. They can't save anyone else. They died, they passed on. They're human. Jesus is the only one, son of God, who lived that sinless life and could be the one who paid the price. And the question is, do we receive that or not? And I just want to challenge you with this right now because I know just seven, eight year, short years ago, I didn't believe in Jesus. I mean, I believed he was like a teacher or a good person that came, but he wasn't my Lord and Savior. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't my eternal life. He wasn't my way to heaven. He wasn't, I didn't have a personal relationship with him. Um, and I'm thankful to God. It's only by the grace of God that I went from not believing to believing. But I remember the moment that I did. I remember the moment that I stopped fighting it and I just said, if you're real, if this word is real, if you're real, Jesus, I'm all in, but I, I need to know, I need you to help me believe. And I surrendered. I had an experience of surrendering. I stopped with the pride and the pushing away and the rationalizing. And I just said, I receive you and I need your help to believe. And something shifted in me. And really and truly, we have to come before him with humility. If we come before him in pride, he can't do anything to help us. Well, first of all, we don't come to him when we're full of pride. We're like, eh, I don't even need you. Pride will keep us from our savior. But the minute we just drop the pride and we say, I don't know, things are getting crazy. This world's getting crazy. I see it's going in the wrong direction. And... I want to put my faith in you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. It's that simple. You don't need to be in a church. I mean, for crying out loud, the four walls of a church, you can't even go into them right now. Maybe in some states you're starting to be able to, but your relationship with Jesus begins just between you and him. You could be in nature. You could be right here at a computer. You could be in a church. You could be with a friend. And it's a humbling of your heart and asking him into your heart. And I just want to challenge you guys to do that if you haven't done it. I want to challenge you to get right with God if you know him as your Lord and Savior, but you've gone astray. You've gotten caught up in the world. Maybe you're, you've, you've become, have a hardened heart because of all the darkness in the world. I just want to challenge you to come back to him and get right with him because he can come in the middle of the night, tonight, tomorrow. He's on his way. He's on his way for his church. And the question is, are you going to be a part of that? Because we're going to be protected and we're going to be with him. No matter what, whether we're here, whether we're raptured before the, the tribulation, whether we ever see the Antichrist or not, we're under his covering. 
And I don't know about you, but there's no worse thought than hearing Jesus say, I never knew you. I don't want to be that person. And there's going to be a lot of them. And the only way to stay pure with him is every single day. First, get right with Jesus. Receive him as your Lord and Savior. And every single day, ask God to search your heart. Every single day, more than ever right now, I'm telling you, because if you guys follow me, you know, I am so concerned for our nation. I'm so concerned for America right now. I see it moving toward a communist, Marxist, socialist. I, I see the loss of law and order. I see deceit. I see so much anger and violence and hatred. I'm concerned for our nation. But I'll tell you what, when you go out and you speak up about it, the hatred that comes back, the hatred toward our administration, the hatred toward conservatives right now, the hatred toward so many things right now is so dark, it's so demonic, it can harden your heart. I can log on to social media and I can instantly feel a shift in my heart. Like, who are these people? What has happened to these fools? Like, who are these fools? And then I have to go back to God and say, God, please help me. Because I, I'm feeling a lot of anger toward these people. People that are so deceived. So deceived right now. And every single one of us, I'm going to tell you, I see so much anger. We have people that hate conservatives. We have people that hate liberals. We have people that hate capitalism. We have people that hate, you know, socialism. We have people who hate our administration. We have people who hate police officers. We have people who hate white people. We have people who hate black people. We have people who hate men. We have people who hate women. We have so much hate right now that it can cause your heart to grow cold if you get caught up in it. People are at each other's throats right now more than ever. And what this world needs is grace. The only way we're going to be, have grace for others is if we're staying connected and abiding in the one who gave us grace every single day. We need triple dose of grace right now. You know what I'm talking about? We need to be on our knees every single day because how quickly our hearts can grow cold and we can grow bitter toward people. And if we have hatred in our heart toward people, watch out because that's sin. And you're letting sin take over because of the actions of other people. I just want to challenge you to keep taking your anger to God. Take your frustrations to God. Take your worries to God. I'm worried about our country right now. I'm, worrying about, I'm worried about the state of humanity right now. But when I take it back to God, he comforts me and he helps me see the only way this is all coming to pass is because I'm allowing it. And he reminds me that I cannot control all this. As much as I want to control it, I can't control it. If, if we have any other control freaks out there, you guys know what it feels like right now. I like, I want to stop it. I want to hit the brakes on this bus going off the cliff. And it's not my job. I don't have the ability to stop it. I can speak truth. I can take bullets. But this bus is going off, going off the cliff. We're going. And you know what? You know what it's ushering in? It's the seven-year tribulation. It's coming sooner than later. And those who don't know Jesus are going to go through it. They're not going to be saved from it. The wrath of God's going to be poured out on this earth. And I don't know about you. There's no way in hell. I want to be trying to survive that seven year tribulation. Like nothing humanity has ever seen. Without my Lord and savior, Jesus Christ. And I hope this spoke to someone, even if it spoke to one person today. If you guys are feeling it, comment below. Let me know. If you're feeling it in your spirit, if you're a follower of Jesus and you know the time is coming, you know the time is short, you see the changes happening, you feel what's happening, God's giving you discernment in your spirit. If you know more than ever, you need to be right with God, but also more than ever, it's time to be speaking truth. The world needs the gospel. The world needs your testimony. The world needs grace. Oh, it's hard to give right now. The world needs love. I'm a feisty one. When I see truth, I don't care who hates me. I will speak truth. No problem. But right now, there's people that can't even hear it because they're so full of hate. They're so deceived. They're so far from God. 
What the world right needs right now is grace. And I will sum this up by saying, I know just in the state of California, they had more suicide attempts in one week than they normally do in a year during this lockdown. And we're not even done with this lockdown. Everyone got let out to go do the protest for a little while. Now everyone's being told in a lot of states to go back inside. There's some crazy stuff happening. But people's mental health, their spiritual health is suffering right now. Regardless of what you believe about the virus, about what the government tells us, about the state of our nation, regardless of what you believe politically, regardless of who you are for or against, as a globe right now, people are hurting. Bad. And if what we're doing is continuing to fight with each other or be at each other's throat, I can promise you we're not being a light. We're not. And I've had to ask God over and over, what is the battle you want me fighting right now? Because I'll fight whatever battle God sends me. To. I'm a fighter. I'm a warrior. I just am. God, send me. I'll go. I'll go. And I don't need people's approval. I could care. I could give a rip what anyone thinks of me. But I do care about the fact that am I walking in what God called me to do? Or am I operating in my own good idea? Am I operating in my own flesh? Am I operating in my own concerns? And every day I keep asking God, please help me. What do you want me to do? What are you calling me to do? So I have a lot more coming on the God-Centered Success podcast. Go subscribe. I'm uploading a new episode tonight for you guys. Um, I believe we need Jesus. I believe we need to get right with God. I, need, I believe we need to stay in the word. And I believe that if you see the bus going off the cliff and you are desperately wanting to hit the brakes, please know that it's going. You're not in control of it. God sees it. And God has to allow what's coming to pass, include, including the new world order and everything that's happening. It has to come to pass for what has to be come in, into play, which is the seven-year tribulation, the rise of the Antichrist, the mark of the beast. All the things are coming. How much of it we will see while we're here on this earth, I don't know because it depends on when we're raptured. But I do know that if you have the covering of Jesus Christ, you're good. I also know this. You want to be on the side of God because there's a full-on battle going on and God's already won it. God already won it on the cross. The, the word is already written and you want to be standing in the victory of what God already did. Everything that's written has to come to pass. And the battles have already been won. So when you're on God's side, you're fighting from victory. You're not fighting for victory. You're fighting from victory. If you're on the side of the enemy right now, I feel for you. I'm going to challenge you right now. Whatever you're selling out for, whatever feels good in your flesh right now, whatever temporary gratification you're having from an eternal perspective, you're going to pay a heavy price. You want to be on the side of God. And the way to do that is to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, not because you deserve it, not because you earned it, not because you're good enough or not good enough. Every human being has sinned. We are in the same boat and we need a Savior. And he did it. He went to the cross for us. The masses screamed, crucify him. And we beat him and sent him to the cross. And he did that for us. He did not have to do that. He did not. God did not have to send his son to die for us. He could have just said, y'all lost your way. Peace out. But he loves us and he wants to spend eternity with us. The question is, do you want to be with him for eternity? Do you want to be on the side of God? Do you want to be on the side of victory? Because God already won. We're in the winning battle. You get to come from victory. But it starts with that personal relationship with Jesus. And then it's, it, it comes to abiding with him, staying the walk with him, staying in the word. Be very careful about anything that pulls you away from God, even if it's you being right about a political view. It's one thing God's been speaking to me about. Socialism, communism, Marxism, that is the fastest way to destroy a nation. When people are standing in line begging for food, they're going to regret what they did. But the thing is, are we coming from love? And are we loving on people, sharing the gospel, sharing the truth? Or are we standing in a place of I'm right and you're wrong? There's right and wrong. God made that clear. And we want to be standing on the side of right. But our job is to love our neighbor as ourself. Speak truth in love. There's a lot of people speaking truth, but not with love. Right? It's hard to do because, man, you got to put on that tough exterior to handle, especially if you have conservative views right now. You get hit hard. 
but how do you keep a soft heart through it all? Because our personal connection to God is going to matter way more than what we do for him on this planet. You can go do a whole bunch of stuff for him and in his name. And Jesus will still say, I never knew you because we have to stay so submitted to him. So I hope this encouraged someone today. I'd love to hear your comments below. I'm going to sign off. The sun's starting to come in this window and this window. Uh, but God bless you guys. Would love to hear from you down below. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.